Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Code Emporium where we're going to talk about transformer neural networks and in this video specifically we're going to go through some intuition, some code, and some math of how to deal with attention and transformers step by step. So we're going to divide this video into three parts. So first we'll start with the motivation for why we need attention. The second is the transformer architecture and walking through an example. And the third is self-attention with some math, intuition, and code. So stay tuned. This here is a recurrent neural network that's rolled out. And X's are the inputs, the O's are the outputs, the H's are the hidden states, and the Y is the training label. Recurrent neural networks used to be the state of the art for sequence to sequence modeling. Sequences can be an ordered set of tokens, which could be like a set of words to form a sentence, for example. And so these recurrent neural networks in many applications of natural language processing were the state of the art for sequence to sequence tasks. However, they suffer from two main disadvantages. So the first is that they are slow. We need to feed these inputs one at a time in order to generate the outputs sequentially one at a time. Also, their training algorithm is pretty slow too. We use a truncated version of backpropagation to train them, and the algorithm is called truncated backpropagation through time. But probably a more pressing issue is that these vectors that are generated intermediately for every word in case of a word language model, we're not sure if they actually truly represent the context of a word itself. After all, the context of a word depends on the words that come before it, as well as the words that come after it. But it's very clear that from a recurrent neural network perspective and architecture, we're only getting the signals from the words that come just before it. Even the bi-directional recurrent neural networks kind of suffer from an issue here because they just look at left to right and right to left context separately and then concatenate them. So there might be some true meaning that's kind of lost when generating these vectors for every word. One way to improve the quality of the vectors generated is via an attention mechanism. So for example, let's say that we have an input sentence that is, my name is a J. It's four words where each of them can be represented by their own vectors. Using attention, we can decide which parts each word needs to focus on. In this case, there's like a table four by four where the bright spots are the spots where this word is focusing on. So for example, my is actually focusing a lot on the word name and it's going to use the context of name in order to incorporate it in its own feature vector. And the same thing is with a J, where a J and name are actually quite closely related. And so the vector that corresponds to a J is going to incorporate some more context with respect to name, which comes before it. And so using attention, we can have every word vector better incorporate the context either before it or after it. All of it can be incorporated much better in their vector than the corresponding recurrent neural network counterpart. This form of attention here is self-attention because we are attending on the same sentence as we are using as input. However, attention has many other forms and can also be used in other applications, including like computer vision. The transformer neural network architecture has the attention piece at its crux. Let's actually walk through an example where we're going to translate this English sentence to a Kannada sentence. Kannada is a regional language in India. I am from the state of Karnataka within India where this is spoken, so we're gonna just work with that language and you're gonna learn some, some Kannada. So that's gonna be fun. We now have the input sentence, my name is Ajay. We pass this simultaneously, all these words, into the encoder of the transformer neural network architecture. This will generate four vectors, one for each word. Now, technically, the way that it's implemented is that these transformer architectures are going to generate word pieces or subwords or byte pair encodings, which are like broken down versions of these words and not full words themselves. But I'm just going to call this a word level language model just for simplicity here. Now that we have these vectors generated, we then pass this simultaneously all into the decoder architecture. And we start with a simple start token. Passing this in and using these vectors, we now generate the first word. In this case, it's, it needs to generate the Kannada translation of this sentence. 
And so it'll start by generating the first word, which is nanna. This means my in Kannada. This is now taken as an input into the decoder for the next phase, and it's going to generate the next word, which is hesaru. This means name in Kannada. And then once again, it takes this word as the input in order to generate the next word, which is a J. And so transformers can be used to translate from English to any other language like Kannada and also other sequence to sequence tasks. Now the part of the video that we want to really focus on is this encoder piece. In fact, I'm gonna break down this encoder piece further by saying here are the four inputs. My name is a J. After positional encoding, we're going to get these yellow vectors. And typically the size of the vectors given in the paper is about 512 dimensions for each. Then these are then passed into our encoder and the encoder is going to generate another set of vectors. The idea here is that through this attention mechanism, these vectors are going to be much more context aware and hence higher quality than these vectors over here. And specifically the main crux of the reason is this multi-headed attention part. And so we're gonna dive into some code, intuition and math behind exactly how this works. Now, one thing to note from this transformer architecture is how exactly does this architecture overcome the disadvantages of the recurrent neural networks that I mentioned before? So the first disadvantage I mentioned was slow training because of sequential inputs and sequential outputs. In this case, we can actually process data in parallel, and so we can make use of modern GPUs. And as I mentioned before, in order to make sure that these vectors are of higher quality and more context aware, we have the attention mechanism that's built in. So let's dive further into this attention mechanism. Now, the multi-headed attention part in the transform architecture kind of looks like this from the main paper, but it's pretty confusing. So I'm gonna be breaking this down. Essentially, every single word that is input to our transformer is going to have three vectors. We have a query vector, which indicates what am I looking for? We have a key vector, which is going to say, what can I offer? And then we have the value vector, which is what I actually offer. Now, jumping into a Colab notebook, we're going to be implementing this all with NumPy. So we have a query vector, a key vector, and a value vector that is randomly initialized. L is going to be the length of the input sequence. In this case, it's my name is a J. So I put it as four. And then the size of each of these vectors for illustrative purposes, I've put it as being eight. And I have randomly initialized via the normal distribution using the randn function. Doing so, you kind of get these vectors that look like this. So it's for every single word. This could be my, for example. It's gonna have an eight cross one vector. For value and for key, it's also gonna have another eight cross one vector. And then for q, it's also going to have an eight cross one vector. All of them for the word my. The same is for the name, is, and a j. Next, let's talk about some self-attention. In order to create an initial attention matrix, we need every word to look at every single other word just to see if it has a higher affinity towards it or not. And this is represented by the query, which is for every word, it is what I am looking for. And then a key, which is what I currently have. This product leads to a four cross four matrix because we had a sequence of four words. My name is Ajay. And in each case, it's going to be proportional to exactly how much attention we want to focus on each word. Now, for example, here, this first line is going to be for the my vector and how much it's going to focus on other vectors. In this case, it's going to focus the most on the word name. And similarly, we can see that for other cases. This here is the huge crux of the attention figure that I showed earlier. Now, second is, why do we need this little denominator, the square root of some dimension of Q and K? Well, this is because we want to, we want to minimize the variance and hence stabilize the values of this Q dot K transpose vector. We can actually see that by looking at the variance of the query vector, the key vector, and the multiplication of both of them. And while the query and key vector are close to one, the variance of the multiplication is much higher. And so in order to make sure that we stabilize these values and reduce its variance, we divide it by the square root of the dimension of the query vector. 
And so you can see that these values are now much more in the same range. And so if we actually apply the scaling, you'll see that the vector generated will now have values that are also of much lower variance and in the same range. The next step we can talk about is masking. So masking is required specifically in the decoder part of the transformer neural network so that we don't look at a future word when trying to generate the current context of the current word. This is because it would be considered cheating. In reality, in the real world, you don't know the words that are going to be generated next. So you can't really create your vectors based off of those words. However, for the encoder, masking isn't really required because all of our inputs are passed into the transformer simultaneously. Yet, let's actually walk through this process of what's going on. So first I'm creating this, this triangular matrix with all of the values below the diagonal is one and above the diagonal is zero. And this will simulate um, the fact that I just mentioned where, for example, my in the sentence, my name is a J can only look at itself and nothing else. Name can only look at my and name is can only look at my name is and a J can only look at my name is a J. Now I'm actually going to transform this such that I just made every single one a zero and also every zero and negative infinity. I did this because if you apply this mask, you'll notice that it's the exact same values for the lower diagonal as it was without the mask over here. But the values that are above that mask are just going to be considered as negative infinity, which means that we're not really gonna be getting any context from it. Specifically, why negative infinity and why zero is also because, well, first I'm adding it here, and second, it's also because of the softmax operation that we're going to be performing next. The softmax operation is used to convert a vector into a probability distribution so that their values add up to one and they're also very interpretable and stable. So I've done a little in interpretation of exactly the math in this sentence over here. And on applying this math, we kind of get the final attention function over here as this value. Now I've applied the mask, but let's say hypothetically, if I didn't apply the mask, let's just see how it looks. The numbers will look like this, where you'll see every row is going to add up to one because it's a probability distribution. But if you apply the mask right now, you'll notice that the attention vector actually doesn't incorporate anything, any word that comes after it because we don't want any context after it. This basically means that the word my is only going to focus on the first word and it in my, the name can only focus on my name and it's getting the weights as such. My name is is going to be, can focus on the first three and a J can focus on the first four. This is required for the decoder, but we don't need the mask for the encoder. Now, if we multiply the attention matrix and the value matrix, we actually get the, these new set of matrices, which should better encapsulate the context of a word. You can compare the before attention with the after attention here. And because this is masked, you'll notice that the first vectors like my are gonna be almost exactly the same. Whereas as you go to the later words, you'll notice how different these vectors actually become. I've now put all of this logic into a function right here, which takes in the query vector, the key vector, the value vector, and an optional mask. And this hence can be used for both the encoder and the decoder, where in the encoder, we don't really need to pass in this mask where we're going to have like the new vectors that look like this and the attention vectors that can actually pay attention to any word. But we can also for the decoder go back and pass in the value of mask such that we make sure that no word is able to get context from the words that come after it. And so we have other another type of value matrix that's generated. What we did right now was just for a single attention head. And like that, we can have multiple attention heads and then stack their results on top of each other in order to get multi-head attention. And according to the paper, this is actually what is being done in the actual production transformer neural network architecture. I'll probably be coding that part out in a separate video, but for this video, I hope the idea of attention, particularly self-attention in transformers makes a lot more sense in intuition, in math, and in code. So thank you all so much for watching. 
Do be on the lookout for more Transformer Neural Network videos, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.